Good morning, YouTube. It is 3.57 on this Thursday. Today's topic is uh, uh, the quantum spin hall effect. Way too early. Or that Higgs chromosomes bathe the electrons light. The magnetism of particles and momentum of receptors, radiation, our mathematics, a solution, asteroid. What am I doing up? Um. So what is the quantum spin hall effect? Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a phenomenon we've known for about 20, 25 years now. Um, maybe 30 years now. We, we've known it for a few decades here. Um, it, it's something that, that happens to electrons. Um, so if you have a, a material... Um, here, let's let's use a. If you have a material uh, and you run a current through it, um, basically you have electrons passing. Um, um, and electrons have a spin. Um, and so you know, uh, we've often said in the in the past, you can think of electrons as particles, or you can think of electrons as waves. They have this particle wave duality, right? Uh, sometimes they exhibit characteristics of a wave, and sometimes they exhibit characteristics of a particle. And so in this case, um, electrons have a spin, and that's a, um, you know, typically you think of spin as a, as a particle characteristic. Uh, it makes more sense that way because, you know, you imagine a particle and it's, you can imagine it spinning. Uh, but spin at the quantum level, at the electron level, happens only in two different directions. Uh, it's sort of locked in that way. It doesn't, you can't spin it in various whatevers. You have an upspin and you have a downspin. Uh, and they're opposite, obviously. And so when you have uh, electrons going through here, you have some electrons that have upspin and you have some electrons that have downspin. And together, it's the whole thing is spin neutral because you've got both going on. Um, but after a while, uh, and I think in certain materials, probably not in all materials, uh, and at a certain length of material, when, when this you have this current going through, eventually all the electrons with upspin are going to go you know to to one side of the material and all the all the electrons with downspin are going to move over to the bottom side and it does this because there's the spin uh i think they're calling it spin orbit coupling anyway the 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 spin of the electron affects its momentum um and affects its path and and so you know the ones with upspin get diverted in one direction and the ones with downspin get diverted in the other direction again the whole thing is spin neutral but you end up having a collection of upspin electrons along this side because it can't go any further once it hits the material edge and you have a collection of downspin electrons on this side so what you end up having is uh, along this edge, you have upspin, a collection of upspin electrons, and along this edge, you have a collection of downspin electrons. Again, the whole thing is spin neutral, but you have your collections on either side. And what ends up happening is, in this material, which I guess uh, is semiconductor material, along the middle you have non-conduction, and then along the edges you have um, what's considered zero resistance conduction. Um, and there's your semiconductor. And so, again, because because this, the collection along this edge is all upspin electrons, and you have a column of it, that's your Hall effect. Um, and and this again, this edge becomes a zero resistance path, uh, which is a very efficient path for for electricity uh, of upspin electrons and a zero resistance path of downspin electrons here. 
And again, in the middle, there's no conduction. So you get this weird material configuration where in the same material, in the middle, th this is called a... Uh, I forget what it's called. There's a fancy name for it. But it's very useful in semiconductors and electronics. So, so we've known this for about 30 years or so. Uh, it has to do with electrons. We'll just recently realize that photons, that light, exhibits the same characteristic. Now, light typically we think of as a wave particle, but we also know that light photons have duality. They have they have particle wave duality. Uh, again, most of the time we think of it as a wave, but there are other times when they exhibit particle characteristics as well. And so, in this instance. Um, it exhibits spin also, and it also ex exhibits its own example of quantum spin Hall effect. Um, the explanation here for the photons is such that, uh, again, we think of spin as, as a particle thing, but, but they're utilizing spin here for photons still as a wave function. Um, when you think of light as a wave, it has a magnetic and, and uh, electrical um, component to a wave. When you when you look at when you look at electromagnetic waves, um, they call it electromagnetic waves because the the magnetic influence of the wave and the electrical influence of a wave are coupled together so tightly, uh, and they're they're perpendicular. When you look at pictures of electromagnetic <laughs> excuse me, electromagnetic waves, you see them as perpendicular. So you have magnet, magnetism and electrical, right? And they're doing this kind of stuff uh, and propagating over a distance. Uh, now, through a single medium, there's no spin. It's spin neutral. There's no spin at all in these. But once it hits an interface, like um, let's say you have light going through air and then it hits gold. That's the example that they, that they give. Um, at that interface, your waves, again, magnetic wave and electrical wave, do a spin at the interface. Um, and then along that interface between gold and air, uh, those waves keep spinning. So that's how photons exhibit their spin, their quantum spin, uh, which, you know, seems a little different than the particle spin of an electron, but they're, the scientists are equating the two. Um, and along this material, you exhibit the spin, and again, the spin will propagate it to one side versus the other side, and over, over the distance, your light, you're going to have upspin light and downspin light. Um, yeah, and they, they've done experiments on this, and there's a collection of experiments, I guess. Um, why is this significant? Well, light is often used in quantum computing world, just like electrons are used in the non-quantum non computing and standard computing, um, like electrical circuits and whatnot. Uh, and if, if we can get zero resistance paths of electrons, uh, as a result of quantum spin Hall effect for standard electronics, maybe we can get um, better pathways of quantum computing uh, with the quantum Hall of, quantum spin Hall effect that that's impacted that that light exhibits. Uh, so quantum computing again is is a fairly new field. We're still trying to develop quantum circuits and quantum computers, we have them, um, and they often use light as a medium as opposed to electricity as a medium, and maybe the quantum hall, the quantum spin hall effect uh, that, that gets exhibited by a photon will help us out with quantum computing. So there you have it. It's a fairly new discovery with electrons. We've known about it for the three decades just realized that photons also exhibit it. Now they're going to see if they can utilize it for quantum computing. Um, yeah, it's, you know, we've known about, we've known about characteristics of light and photons for about 150 years. Uh, and, but this, 
realizing that they exhibit common spin Hall effect is just just recent. So our ideas of light have changed again uh, just recently. So that's always exciting, uh, pushing pushing our knowledge base of of what we you know things that we think we know about. <laughs> We really don't have any idea. So there you go. Um uh, quantum spin hall effect, a fun little fun little uh characteristic of matter and light. So uh I gotta head off to work. You gotta go do whatever it is you do. Uh, yeah, we'll talk to you tomorrow.